Well, our scripture passage this morning comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. Listen now for God's word. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it, and it will be sent back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as a church family, we have been going through an evangelism series called Unbinding the Gospel. And it's got a couple books in it. And the whole idea behind this Unbinding series is that as we study these books, we are accessing God's promise to us through Jesus' words in Scripture in Matthew 18, 18 through 20, where Jesus says, Truly, I tell you, whatever you tie up, whatever you bind on earth, will also be bound in heaven. And whatever you untie or unbind on earth, will be untied or unbound in heaven. And he says, surely I tell you, wherever two or three of you are gathered, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it for you. And I am there with you also. It's a powerful promise. We've been learning it by praying together in pairs, in small groups, studying God's word together. And what we're trying to do is go from just being followers of Jesus to actually being missionaries of Jesus, sent in God's power. So we've gone through Unbinding the Gospel. We did that book. We went through uh, Unbinding Your Heart. We did that book. In the winter, we're going to do Unbinding Your Soul. But today, we're doing Unbinding Your Donkey. <laughs> And it's great, because when you read this passage in Greek, it's the same word, luo, that Jesus used in the Gospel of Matthew, saying, whatever you unbind on earth, whatever you agree, wherever you agree God's power should go on earth, that's where God's power comes down, in heaven. And we have that same word here today. When Jesus tells two disciples, there's those two by two again, Go into the next village and unbind that donkey. I love the first verse in this chapter. If you read it in Latin, it literally says, Jesus takes two disciples and he missions them. If you read it in Greek, it says he takes two students and he apostles them. We read the passage today in English, and we see that he takes two followers and he sends them. That's what we're engaged with as a congregation this year. Apostles, missionaries, sent ones. That's what we're becoming. So it's not just the same word that's happening in scripture. It's the same process that we're engaged in alongside these disciples. But what's their mission today? Unbind that 
donkey. And I gotta tell you, this mission would give me the jitters if Jesus gave it to me. It's like saying, David, I want you to pick a buddy, use the buddy system, and I want you to go to Gunnersville and the first blue pickup you see that has zero miles on the odometer, I mean a brand new Ford. The keys are in the ignition. I want you to get into the driver's seat and just crank it. And if somebody says, what are you doing with my car? Tell them, Jesus needs it. And drive away. I tell you, if Jesus gave me that mission, you better believe me and my prayer partner be praying the whole way to Gunnersville. <laughs> praying the cops don't come after us. But I have to say that this story, almost more than any other, represents how I feel about my own Christian journey. I feel like the ways that I have grown as a Christian have been when God is taking me outside of my comfort zone. When he sent me to do something that I don't have control over the outcome. Because ultimately, God is not interested on sending you on missions where you control the outcome. God is interested in sending you on a mission where he controls the outcome. I remember when I was a college student doing unbinding the gospel, that same series, for the first time eight years ago at University of Florida. You all know they get these wacky little devotions. And I like the ones that made me talk to people. I'm okay to talk. But it really gets me outside my comfort zone if I have to serve somebody that I don't know. I'm very embarrassed by that. I leave that to Allison. <laughs> but the assignment for this morning, I woke up, read it, it was some Bible verse, and it said, David, I want you, this is written in the book, to walk around today, go on a prayer walk, and if you see somebody that needs help, help them. And I thought, oh, brother, I do not want to do this one. I like the prayer ones, not these prayer walk things. But I said, I'm going to do it. So I started walking up the main street of uh, Gainesville, Florida, and I saw this gentleman in kind of a shabby coat walking towards me. Didn't look homeless or anything, just looked, you know, friendly guy. I just kind of noticed him. Uh, didn't want to actually serve him, though. I thought maybe Jesus had a different plan. So I kept walking until I got to the end of the road, chickened out. Didn't serve a soul. So I kept praying. I turned around, walked the other way, and I see the same guy walking towards me. Well, this time I kind of wave to him. He kind of waves back. And I get to the end of the street. I chicken out again. Well, the third time, I walk back. And he's walking back the other way. And I'm thinking, David, somebody just walking back and forth in the middle of a work day, maybe they're hungry. Maybe God's trying to tell me something. So I stopped in at McDonald's, bought a quarter pounder with cheese and french fries, and the next time I saw him, I said, Sir, I'm sorry, I don't know if this would be meaningful to you, but I brought you this McDonald's for you to have. And he reached into that bag, and he pulled out that quarter pounder with cheese with the biggest smile on his face. And he said, Thank you. I've been walking around, and I'm so hungry. That was a powerful moment for me. Learning to listen to Jesus' voice, sending me, apostling me, missioning me to do his will. I went from University of Florida to New York City, and I handed out a lot of quarter pounders with cheese while I walked around. So these disciples, they walk into the village on the outskirts of Jerusalem. And they dig their fingers into the rope around that donkey's neck. And they untie it. But as they're unbinding that donkey on earth, they're actually unbinding 
God's heavenly covenant promise for Jesus Christ from centuries before in the prophet Zechariah saying, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Daughter of Jerusalem, shout. See your king comes, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. Scripture is unbound. The hearts of the owner of the donkey are unbound, saying, take it. The donkey has never been ridden before. His instincts are unbound as Jesus sits on top of him and this donkey's in the center of a parade with a bunch of people shouting at him. The people in the crowd unbind their cloaks and throw them to the floor. Children climb trees and unbind branches from the trees to wave and shout for Jesus. And heaven and earth itself are unbound, singing the song that the angels sang at Christmas. Glory to God in the highest. Hosanna to the King. But the thing that strikes me most about this passage is that if you read the way it goes, it's clear that Jesus doesn't need these two disciples to untie that donkey for him to be crowned king. He's clearly already the king of creation. Jesus already knows the location of every donkey in that village. He already knows the hearts of every donkey owner in that village. And Jesus already knows that as surely as he enters into Jerusalem on that donkey, he will leave it on a cross. Jesus doesn't need those disciples to become apostles, but he chooses them. He wants them. He coaches them on how to grow, how to be transformed to fulfill a mission, the outcome of which they cannot control, but only God can control. We know it is not the last mission that Jesus would send them on. Four days later, they would hear Jesus' new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. Five days later, they would share a last supper with Jesus, watch him be tortured and killed, and go from being apostles to abandoners. And seven days later, they would see the risen Jesus, telling them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And so the question for us today is what is God asking for you to unbind in your life? What situation outside of your comfort zone is Jesus calling you to so that he can unbind his heavenly promises to share with somebody else. What donkey do you need to untie? That's a question we bring with us to this table. This is not Covenant's table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This table belongs to the Lord. And everyone who places their trust in Jesus Christ is invited to share in this holy meal to be transformed from followers into missionaries.